what's up my prestigious little palmellos? This is Rob from A Gay Guy Plays and today we are back with another installment of the Weekly Night Wave. The series where we take a look at this week's acts and find the most efficient or most entertaining way to take them on. Now, as always, or almost always, I do have a Warframe of the Week. In fact, it is my favorite one to play Railjack with and I'm really curious to see exactly what you guys' favorites have been. In addition to that, we do have a lot of Netflix on the Weekly Watch List. In fact, I've actually completed one for one which we'll go ahead and have a little chat about later. In addition to that, I also wanted to talk about the potential future of Nightwave and what you guys want to see next, but before we jump into any of that, let's go ahead and take a look at the axe. So first and foremost, we have Mow Them Down, which is kill 150 enemies with a primary weapon. Interesting fact, I haven't been using my primary weapons much these days. I'm really focused a lot on clearing things out with melee and kind of like softening them up with a status secondary, but I guess I'm going to have to kind of like switch things up. Now, really curious, what is one of your favorite primaries that you literally have not touched in ages? Go ahead and use that and report back. Let me know how you feel about it. Moving on, we have the Cache Hunter. Find all caches in three sabotage missions. To be honest with you, that seems a little more trouble than it's worth. Next up, Conservationist. Speaking of more trouble than it's worth, complete six different perfect animal captures in Orb Valis. I'm really curious. I almost wonder, maybe this is me putting it out into the universe. I would like to see what missions are the most skipped when it comes to like completing night waves when it's like oh i'm really not going to do that and i wonder if de will take those stats into like consideration and see what they could do to maybe bump those things up and make them a little bit better next up we have eliminator complete three exterminate missions really really easy unhunts pick up eight rare mods which is fantastic when you do it in the index and i know a lot of people are trying to you know get their funds up after funding their railjack or are attempting to fund their railjack so that's a great like little mishmash there. We also have Jailer, which is complete three capture missions. Again, lots of hit and quit it. Profit Taker, speaking of hit it and quit it, um, this is going to be your Elite Weekly. Uh, personally though, like, there's really nothing new or interesting that's dropping from Profit Taker, so I don't even feel like it's worth my time or energy. Next up, we have Silent Eliminator, and this goes perfectly with the Eliminator one. Is it called Eliminator? Yeah. And this is basically complete an extermination mission with only level 30 or higher enemies without triggering alarms. Easily done in the void if you really, really feel like it. But this is not hard to do with anything, to be honest with you. This is like one of the easiest weeklies out there. And it kind of like makes me question some of the other weeklies. Now, I'm really curious if you guys been doing your night waves at all. Because if I'm going to be honest with you, I have not really touched them. Aside from like the dailies that accidentally get done uh, when I'm playing other game modes. And it kind of bums me out because, you know, when Railjack was introduced, a lot of people were talking about, oh, Railjack is going to be about connectivity, but we do not have any Nightwave Railjack missions, so part of me is almost like, yeah, connectivity, sure. Um, but let's go ahead and have a quick chat about Railjack at this not Railjack about Nightwave at this point in time because to be honest with you like I'm really curious when they're gonna drop the next episode they've got a ton of things to do right they've got polish passes for Railjack that they need to get done they're also like needing to deliver on new war so this is kind of like another story based item and a part of me is like saying when is it gonna come are we just gonna have intermission forever and ever and ever because like, they can't hold out on New War for any longer than they already have. So what's the next potential story? You know, we definitely have our, this one, oh, and this one was Grenier focused, but let's be honest, it was Grenier, and then they kind of twisted it up with a little corpus at the end. The Emissary was all infested. So do you think maybe we'll get like sentience leading us into the New War? Or do you think we'll actually jump into something that is more focused around the corpus? Me personally, I'd love to see the lead into the new war with the use of Nightwave, but also at the same time, I'd just like to have new war, period. Um, now, That's let's move into uh, my Warframe of the week. And I know, you guys are probably saying, listen, why are you using this Warframe in Railjack? And 
keep in mind, I'm 150% aware that there are certain Warframes that are currently buffing Railjack. You know, we have Rhino, we have Wisp running around with her uh, different little, what is it called? Her little, her little slugs, her jar slugs. I don't know what else to call them, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, that can buff things. There's a lot of Warframes that have these cool buffing effects that have actually been working on the Railjacks. But me personally, in my head, I'm thinking, yo, they probably go and fix that when they get back into the office. So, you know, enjoy them while they last. You know, have your little rhino roar moment. Get into your little front cannon. Blow up a couple cruise ships. And who knows? Maybe they'll implement it and say it's good synergy. I don't know. Let me know what your opinions are. But me personally, I've been running a lot of engineering. And I love Korra as, like, the mama of the ship. So, oh, I shit. I didn't even realize I had Pilfering Strangle Dome on. Well, let's pretend that you uh, did not see that. And actually, it doesn't really fucking matter now that I think about it. Really, you could put anything in there. You could put, like, a Power Strength mod. You could put... I probably would put, like, a Power Strength mod in there. Or even the Whip one. The Accumulating Whip. But let's just pretend it's like that for now. Actually, let's let's pretend that it's, um, uh, what is it called? Intensify. I completely forgot that I had that in there because I think that I was running it for a Kuva survival. But, you know, just in case you want a Kuva survival variation, that's going to be the one for you. It's going to drop the little Intensify there. We're going to pretend that you didn't see any of that. You know, just leave it there. Um, but that is currently what I am ending up running when it comes to Korra. But I like her as an engineer because she, her, what is it called? Her, um... Her second ability, her ensnare, fucking fantastic for goddamn taking on all of the what uh, all of the boarding parties. Cause literally they pop in and you kind of know where they're gonna pop in. You only need to catch one. You just ensnare them and you wrap them up. I was using Vobon for a little bit because I was like, oh my god, it's an engineer and it's like an engineer on the ship. Like, ha ha, ha so funny. But I found that it took a little bit longer because like the animations and the wind up on his vortex and having to hold it down to like suck them up. I mean, it's fantastic because you can lay down a bunch of Bastilles, but I feel like I can just ensnare, hit it once, and basically cluster them together, and it's super duper easy. I do like the whole fact that you can toss down a Bastille and then do all of like the ship things, like you know, sometimes they'll set a fire, sometimes they'll build electricity thing, set it down, do that, and they'll kind of strip them of their armor. But I, at the same time, I kind of like being able to just set them, have my cats kind of like, you know, strip off their armor and shit like, you know, one by one and then take on everything I need to take on. Use my dual Karis and you know how you have the throwing blade thing where you kind of like can throw both blades at the same time. It kind of covers that area of effect. That's always nice and then soften them up with a little Kuva Brack. It's very, very nice. I've been having a lot of fun with her. In fact, I even went ahead and live on stream, I uh, played around with a little bit of coloration for her. I will go ahead and leave the color codes for this down in the description box below, just in case you guys are curious. Now, when it comes down to the watch list, so that's my Warframe of the Week. Let me know what other frames you've been enjoying down in the comments below for your Railjack. Are you using some of the buffs while you can? Or did you find something else that you find more um, effective and fun? You guys know I also really like Loki for boarding ships. He's definitely my favorite. And I know they've got the whole Avara, like, intrinsics farm. I'm not that stressed about it. But if that's what you're using, let me know. Um, now, I do have to say I finished Witcher. I finished Witcher and, like, one day I knocked it out and it was a really, really good experience. However, I have a feeling that a lot of what we saw was hyper-ultra-condensed. Um, it gave me, and don't be mad at me, it kind of gave me Twilight vibes because I never read the Twilight books, but I could tell just by reading or just by watching the movie that they definitely like, you know, went from friends into like, oh my God, we love each other and I'm introducing you to my family and we're like on great terms. And there were some parts in The Witcher where I felt like they jumped ahead and some relationships were a little more intense than, you know, the screen time that they were given. I was like, yo, you had maybe 15 minutes of screen time and y'all really that close already? I'm just putting it out there. Uh, however, I am really excited to see how it all ends. It's weird, too. For those of you guys who have not watched it, this is not a spoiler, but I do want to give you a heads up. There are some parts where you're like, huh? Why are you alive in here, but you're not alive in this part, but you're this person's experience? It's, they're running on different timelines, and all of the timelines kind of converge. So just keep that in mind, because some people live longer than other people, like, biologically. 
just putting that out there. And I didn't realize it until it got a little bit closer to the end, and I was like, uh. Um, however, I am really excited for season two of it if it does get brought back on, because it kind of ends at a beginning. That, and that's the way I'm going to put it. It like, it didn't feel like it had a great conclusion. It just felt like, a, oh, it's going, we, as we're going to keep going, I hope. Because I enjoyed it enough to watch a second season of it. Now, speaking of second seasons, I started You Season 2, um, which I'm actually very, very into. It's already got me hooked straight out of the gate. I'm really curious to see how it goes. I'm a fan of the man in the box. I don't know why, but I really, really like him. I'm not going to go into any more details than that. But uh, so far, I've watched a couple episodes on that, and I'm really enjoying it. Um, I still have to knock out Magician Season 4. I'm going to be honest. I'm pretty sure that I watched that on a different platform, if you know what I mean. Platforms that I cannot name here on YouTube. Um, but I, did, I think I might have watched it somewhere else, but I'm going to double check. And last, I am going to reveal something. Uh, I was chatting with somebody, and I don't like reality shows, and I'm not even sure if I really like this reality show, but I have been watching it addictively. It's called The Circle. It's on Netflix as well, and it's like a reality show that has to deal completely with social media. Everybody lives in the same apartment, right? Nobody's allowed to see each other. They're only allowed to chat with each other via social media. There are people that are trying to catfish other people. There are trying, there are other people trying to, you know, fake build alliances with other people, so on and so forth. There's, there's a lot of shit that goes down and they're releasing four episodes every Wednesday. I've almost completed the first four episodes and I have to admit, I kind of really like it. Uh, they're going to be dropping four more episodes this upcoming Wednesday. And again, it's called The Circle. Um, I haven't watched anything else on any other platforms. However, I have been made aware that the new season of Doctor Who is out. And I'm playing that they, I'm praying that they give Jodie Whittaker a better version of the Doctor this time around. And that she stops saying fam all the freaking time. But... That is kind of like my stance on that. I'm crossing my fingers that they do her a little bit justice and don't make her seem like a complete idiot because the writers, they fucked her up first run. I hope they don't do that again. I feel like she got the raw end of the deal. Regardless, that is my uh, must watch list or my watch list for this week. Let me know how you guys feel about any of that. Have you been watching any of these shows or do you have any suggestions? Leave them all down in the comments below. And uh, that about does it for me for now. So as always, love somebody, hurt nobody, and touch your body. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.